Welcome back, everybody, to the Investor Podcast. I am Andressa Gadelli. And this is Liz Faircloth. Excited to be back with you for a mini-sode. And what we're going to be talking about today are the four worst mistakes when it comes to investing. You know, and these are, how do you avoid these mistakes, right? And we're going to be talking about what they are and how you can set yourself up for success. Because I think, Andressa, so many women fear making mistakes. And we just don't want you to be stopped by that. We want you to actually move through it with power, with confidence. So that's what well, we're going to be doing. Well, I'm going to guarantee you guys, you guys going to make a lot of mistakes. Not well, those four. Yeah. <laughs> Not those four. Make others, but those. So let's get started, Liz. What is your number one? You know, we talk a lot about due diligence and investing. And due diligence is absolutely part of the process, right? Looking at a, at a property, due diligence of, a, of an operator. Due diligence is just like one of those, you know, terms we, we use every day in our world. But here's the deal. There's a balancing act of due diligence. And what we find is that most women who invest are either one or the other. Some are like overdoing due diligence and some are overlooking due diligence. And what you need to really assess is which one are you and then set yourself up for success. Let me give you a quick example. If you're somebody who overlooks due diligence, that means you get into deals too quickly. Meaning, I got a 14 unit, I'm so excited about this property, and then someone starts to ask you some questions about it, and you're like, I didn't think about that, I didn't think about that. So meaning you're a little more of a risk taker, you're a little more like shoot from the hip kind of person, um, and, and, and while that serves you as making decisions, that may bite you in the, you know what, if you don't actually put some pieces in place to make sure you're doing the due diligence. That has happened to me, especially early in my career, Andressa. We move too quickly on properties and we move too quickly on, on partners. Um, I'm more of an overlooker. Now, here's where people also identify, especially women. They can overdo due diligence. That's like the paralysis analysis type of person where they have four or five different types of spreadsheets they are running in. They are still not sure. They're all, they're still doing the due diligence like three months later. And you're like, that deal's not even on the market anymore, right? <laughs> that, that kind of person. So the, the key is to know where you are naturally and then know where the balancing act is because a little bit of both is important to be a savvy investor. You do need to have both, but you're going to tend to be more than the other of one. And then you need to set yourself up for success moving forward. So, so think about it for yourself. Are you an overlooker or are you an overdoer for due diligence? That's number one. Number two, ladies, is not developing the skill set that you need to hire, manage and fire team members. You really can hire based on skill set only. Besides that, you need to have emotional intelligence, taking consideration, communication skills, capability, availability of people too, right? Because sometimes people say one thing, but they are not available to it. One thing that Liz and I is a non-negotiable for our team is self-development. If the person is not committed to self-development, it is just not possible because we are, and we're going to raise the bar as we go along. And if the person is not coming with, with us in the mindset perspective, the gap, it's, it's not even possible. We're not going to be talking about the same language. So think about it. Even if you don't have a team member right now, you do communicate with people. You have contractors, you have tenants, you have team members either directly or indirectly your bookkeeper, all of those are people that you are going, you technically hire them or fire them. They are part of your circle. So really pay attention on, on that and do not ignore the red flags. They will not go down ever. So if you see them, it is just a matter of how quickly you can get ready of them now or later, but they will not disappear. That's so true, Andressa. So here's number three. Number three that we see a big mistake we see so many women making is that they get so excited about certain trends in our, our investing space, but they actually don't have a strategy on how to make that, you know, trend, if you will, successful in the local market. And I'm going to get into that a little bit deeper, but that is a big mistake a lot of women make. So here's the deal, Andressa. Why I'm bringing up the mistake of chasing trends is right now, People may be really frustrated with certain areas of real estate, right? Multifamily, uh, what have you. They're like, I can't, these deals are not penciling out. This is not penciling out. Oh, maybe I can do tiny homes in my backyard. And that's a whole trend that, you know, that I can jump into right now. 
there is a time to pivot in our business, and I'm all for pivoting. There's also a time that you're chasing something without actually having the strategy in place to be effective and, and quite honestly, efficient and make money that you're looking for. For example, I hear it so much. I'm on various podcasts. I was talking with a host the other day, and she's like, I really want to buy an Airbnb. And I'm like, that's awesome. You know, that's great. She goes, it's really, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a trend. I see it. I, I just, oh my God, I just want to do it. Now, she could go do that, find a single family home, get all the beautiful furniture. But yet I've seen it happen where people do that. And then they come to find out that regulations aren't even supportive of Airbnb. And what they have to actually do is convert it to a long-term rental. Like to me, that's the, that's the mistake, right? That you haven't really thought through not only multiple ways to, to, to make money with a property. More importantly, is it aligned with the local market? And that's a big mistake because we get so enamored with trends. I think that you're not really looking at the local market and what's needed in the local market. Real estate is hyper local. It always will and it always has been. And it will continue to, especially thriving on any market. So that's the big mistake to avoid is look at trends. That might be a great opportunity. But if you don't actually have a strategy on the team, the finances, you're going to shoot yourselves in the foot and you're just going to have to like retract after. <laughs> oh, I have to change change what I have to do at the last minute versus where you could have actually been set up for success. So try to avoid that mistake. The last mistake here that we want to encourage you to do not make because we made them is going it alone. I think a lot of women that are overachievers across the board in their lives. That's how they do it, right? They are leaders across the board, play sports, super competitive, A-type students. We are used to lead. We are used to figure things out. We are used to make it happen. And I think that to our own detriment, this works against us in real estate. I'm not saying that doesn't have power and it was not valuable in the first phase of investing, right? The hustle, the grit, and all of that mentality is what took me here. For the past couple of years, the more that I reach out to other women that are ahead of me, that live their own lives on their own terms, I learn from them that the life that I want to live is possible. It is not just inside my own head. I was just surrounding myself with not the right people. They were living a different life that I wanted to live. So we encourage you to really create your circle of women that you can rely on, women that are playing at the same level, women that you can pour into them and they pour into you. That is the key to, to move forward. So you're not only relying on your resources, on your capability, on yourself, because that's going to limit your growth, hands down. Hands down. Last thing to say is like many people say, okay, where are those freaking women? Where are they? Where are these amazing, phenomenal, <laughs> badass women? And I, I hear you because a lot of places that I go, I'm pouring into people and nobody's pouring into me. And, and that is one of the reasons why we created InvestorCon, our annual conference coming up on June 2nd to 4th where this is a conference for high-level women who are playing at the same level. The subjects that we're going to be talking are high-level. We're not there to lollygag. The women that are going are movers and shakers. They are decision makers. So if you want to put yourself in the right room with the right people, this is the place, my dear. So we're going to put all the information below. Check out all our speakers and our agenda. It's packed in a beautiful Austin resort. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope to see you in Austin. Bye. Thank you so much.